Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at elimination of unrealized holding gain or loss on intercompany sales of property, plant, and equipment. This is part five of five series. In other words, I have four prior session about this topic. You can see them in the description for the link. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as the CPA FAR exam course. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in the playlist. If you're benefiting, if you're listening to them, it means other people might benefit as well. So please help me spread the word. Also, I have my website. On my website, I have additional resources and exercises, multiple choice questions, true false. You have access to the PowerPoint slides, notes, and over 2,000 CPA questions. If you're interested, please check out my website. StudyBuddyPal.co is an artificial intelligence driven study buddy platform that matches with a CPA or a CFA candidate if you'd like to study with others. They have users in 85 countries and 2,800 cities. What is the prerequisite for this session? If you're interested, there are four prior sessions about elimination of gain and losses on intercompany sales of property. You can see the link in the description. Let's go ahead and dive into this comprehensive example and show you how do we compute the, that information. On January 2nd, 2013, so make, make sure we are aware of the dates, P Company, Tarrant Company, sold a piece of equipment to its 80% subsidiary S Company. The equipment originally has a cost of 50,000, accumulated depreciation of 20. This means the book value equal to 30,000. That's the book value on the parent company books. 50 minus 20, 50 minus 20. They sold it for 35. Well, if they sold it for 35, it means they're gonna have a $5,000 gain. And it has a remaining life of five years. Plymouth used the cost methods. So we're gonna use the cost method to record the investments in uh, an S company. Calculate the unrealized gain, which we already did from the intercompany sale. Well, the cost has 50,000. Accumulated depreciation is 20. The book value is 30,000. We sold it for 35 minus the book value gives us a gain of 5,000. Now this $5,000 gain, this is an intercompany gain. Okay, so we're gonna take this gain and divide it by five and we're gonna be amortizing it over 1,000. You will see how, just make a note of this. Now let me show you the journal entry because if you understand the journal entry, what happened at P company and what happened at S company, the subsequent entries will be much, much easier to understand. So first you compute the gain, the unrealized gain is 5,000, the intercompany gain. Now, we debit cash of 35,000. I mean, debit cash means uh, the parent company debit cash of 35,000 because they sold the asset for 35,000. They debit accumulated depreciation, 20,000, because they have to remove accumulated depreciation. They credit equipment. They have to remove the equipment for 50,000. So this is the equipment, the $30,000 book value. Then they credit a gain of 50,000. Now remember, this gain is an intercompany gain that will need to be eliminated, okay? Now, the S company, S company will debit equipment for the cost 35,000 and they will credit cash 35,000. So notice debit cash 35, credit cash 35, those two, those two would cancel each other out. Now what's left is, what's left is, is the gain that we'll have to eliminate. The equipment will have to be restored. So the equipment, this account, which is equipment and accumulated depreciation, we have to restore them. When we prepare the financial statements, we have to restore them as if they are still on the parent company books. So the cash basically eliminate each other. The gain, we have to eliminate the gain. So we'll have to eliminate this account as well. So how do we eliminate the gain? We're gonna debit the gain. We're gonna debit the gain. So let's see what happened to the equipment. So that's easy. We're gonna debit the gain because we credit the gain. So here's what happened to our equipment. Our equipment supposed to be $50,000. That's the account. That's the original cost. We credited the equipment, 50,000. Then we debited the equipment. No, no, no. So we credited the equipment, 50,000. Then we debited the equipment, 35. Okay. Now what happened, we need to restore it back to 50. To restore it back to 50, we have to add, we have to add 15,000. See this? Now, let's talk about accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation 
it should be at 20,000. We started at 20,000. Then we removed it. We debited it 20,000. Well, guess what? We have to restore it. Therefore, we have to, let me change a different color. It's in orange. We have to go back and credit, credit 20,000. So to restore everything, we're going to have to credit accumulated depreciation. We're going to have to debit equipment and we're going to have to debit gain. So let's take a look at the, at the, to eliminate the intercompany. We're going to have to debit the gain. I already told you this. We're going to have to debit the equipment. I already told you this. And we're going to have to credit accumulated depreciation. Now we have to understand that this entry, let me change my color here. This entry here, this entry here would repeat itself every year. So every year we have to, when we prepare the consolidated financial statements, we have to go back to the original number. And every every time we have to debit the equipment, credit accumulated depreciation. Now, can we keep on debiting gains? No, gain will be closed. By the end of 2013, this account will be gone. Therefore, in future years, since we are using the cost method, we're gonna be debiting beginning retained earnings parent company so this account in 2014 2015 2016 and 2017 it will be it will be this entry okay and we'll see it in a moment once we do so so this is to eliminate the intercompany sale and restate the equipment and accumulated depreciation the year it was it was sold and in that year we would have gain now also remember when we depreciate this asset remember when we depreciate this asset we have to assume that we are still depreciating the asset based on the old value what does that mean let's go back here the old value the old value the old value is 50000 20000 was was uh, depreciated already so the book value was 30 now when this company transfer from when this company transfer from the parent company to the subsidiary it was inflated by 5,000. Okay, it was inflated by 5,000. Now, when we depreciate this asset on the on the S company books, well, we're gonna have 5,000 in aggregate of extra depreciation. We're gonna do this over five years. Therefore, every year we're gonna have an extra $1,000 in depreciation on S's books. What does that mean? It means every year we have to reduce depreciation expense and reduce accumulated depreciation by a thousand this way we depreciate the asset as if it was still at thirty thousand so let's take a look at this entry so so this is the entry to basically book the proper consolidated depreciation once again when the when the asset is being depreciated on the on the subsidiaries books we're, we're adding an extra one thousand why because we increase its cost by ten thousand, and we can do so, and we can do so. You have to assume that the asset still with the parent company. Therefore, we credit depreciation expense, debit accumulated, debit accumulated depreciation. So basically, reduce accumulated depreciation, reduce depreciation expense. And obviously, this entry will 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 appear with us every year, except that accumulated depreciation will have to be added a thousand dollar every year because it's going to accumulate. Okay, we'll see that in a moment. Okay, so this is for twenty thirteen. So they want us to uh, to eliminate the unrealized gain or loss from prior year intercompany sale and to restate the equipment accumulated depreciation between 2014 and 20, 2014 and 2017 the next four years we're going to have to debit equipment same concept because those are intercompany transaction credit accumulated depreciation okay now what's going to be different in the in, in the year other than the sale year, what's going to be different is gain. We don't have the gain anymore. So going forward, we're going to debit beginning retained earning parent company to reduce the gain on the consolidated by 5,000 because we don't have gain. Gain gets closed. So this is what happened to eliminate the entries. Now, every year, we also have to repeat, not to repeat, we have to eliminate that $1,000 of accumulated depreciation. So we did it in year one. In year two, we're going to debit accumulated depreciation, not $1,000. we are going to debit accumulated depreciation, $2,000. You, know, you might be saying why. Well, because for this year, we have to remove $1,000. For this year, $1,000. And we have to remove another $1,000 from the prior year. So this $1,000... This 1,000 is basically this 1,000, oops, yeah, this 1,000. 
this 1,000, or, or sorry, this 1,000, this 1,000. Okay, the, the year one, 1,000. Now in year 2015, which is the third year, we're gonna have to eliminate 3,000 of accumulated depreciation, 1,000 for the current year and 2,000 from the prior year. In 2016, we're gonna have 4,000 of accumulated depreciation, 1,000 for the current year and 3,000 from year one, year two and year three. And year five, we're gonna have $5,000 and uh, that's gonna be 1,000 for the current year and 4,000 for the other four years. Okay, so this is, those are the entries. Now, assume that Plymouth P bought the equipment above from S. That's, it, it's, assume it's the opposite. It's the, if it's the opposite, you, I'm sure you can flip the entries. We have the gain, we have the loss, so on and so forth. But what they want us to do is prepare the elimination entry to adjust depreciation expense for year 2017. So for year 2017, this is what they're asking, but that's assuming now, assuming the asset is on the uh, P company, the parent company here, what they were assuming, assuming P bought the asset, not P sold the asset. Well, if P bought the asset, well, same thing. We're gonna have a gain of 5,000 and accumulated depreciation. Therefore, we have to debit accumulated depreciation 5,000, of which will be 1,000 for depreciation expense. And the remaining, and the remaining 4,000 will be two beginning retained earning 80% and non-controlling interest 20%. Remember, now we are looking at it as if P company bought it, P purchased, okay? The P company purchased the asset. Therefore, the remaining 4,000 will have to be split between P retained earning because we, we own, remember, we own 20, there's a, we only own 80%, there's 20% non-controlling interest so that's what we have to do and obviously in year in the prior year in 2016 we'll have 4,000 of which 1,000 then we have to split the 3,000 the remaining 3,000 80 percent 20 percent beginning retained earning and non-controlling interest in the prior session I do have a complete example like that if you're interested you can go ahead and look at it now use the information now assume P uses the complete equity method in its account for its investment. Now go back where P, P uses the equity method rather than the inv uh, uh, for its investment. You know, we're going to be using the only difference between this and number one. And number one, we use the cost method. Now we're going to be using the equity method. Slight differences, but potato, potato, I'm sure you can, you can follow. So we're going to debit equipment. Once again, we're going to restore the equipment, 15,000. Now we're going to debit investment and S company. 5,000 not gain, and we're going to credit accumulated depreciation of 20,000. Why investment in S company? Because the gain increases the investment. The gain increases the investment account. Therefore, we reduce the, uh, we have to debit the investment account. Basically, simply put, it's rather than the gain, we're going to debit the investment account. We're going to debit the investment account. So this is the entry. Now for the depreciation, it's practically the same year after year except rather than beginning retained earnings, rather than beginning retained earnings, P company, we will we will credit investment in S, and this will process repeat itself. So the first two entries are the same. You have to fix depreciation. Then the third one, since we're using the equity method, the adjustment go into the investment rather than beginning retained earnings. Same thing, same exact thing, except it goes into the investment. So this is doing the same thing as prop as the first exercise, as the first requirement, uh, except we're using the equity, the complete equity method. Use the information, assume that S company, the subsidiary, sell the equipment for 20,000 to a third party. Now we're gonna be selling it to a third party after it has owned the equipment for three years. Now we own the equipment three years, we sold it for 20,000. When we sell an asset, the first thing we have to find out is our book value. To find the book value, we have to find out how much accumulated depreciation we have, okay? So we have the asset on our books. It has a $35,000 cost. We're gonna depreciate the asset over five years. So we're taking 7,000 per year. And we had this asset for three years because by the third year we sold it. So 21,000 of accumulated depreciation was taking. We purchased the asset for 35 minus 21 will give us a book value of 14. We sold the asset for 20. We have a gain, S company for 6,000. This is the gain for the S company. Now we're gonna compute, this is the gain for the S company. Now they want us to compute the consolidated gain or loss, the consolidated gain or loss for everything. Well, same thing. We have to go back and say, 
what was the record if 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 the asset were, were were kept at the company what would have been accumulated depreciation well when we sold the asset from p to s we had depreciation of twenty thousand. this is the original parent company depreciation then the subsidiary depreciated the asset for twenty one thousand. but remember every year we were reducing depreciation by three because we were over depreciating therefore if the asset being kept on the parent books alone they would have depreciation of 38. now the, the the entity cost is 50. the total accumulated depreciation is 38. book value is 12. we sold it for 20. book value is 12. we have a gain of 8,000. now notice the consolidated has a gain of eight the subsidiary only has a gain of six so so remember we are kind of in a short week in a sense we are short of two thousand dollars of gains between the two now the last thing is prepare the appropriate eliminating entry as of december 31st 2015 so the third year because 2013 2014 2015 assuming that the asset has been depreciated for the year so we're going to assume that the asset has been depreciated for 2013 2014 and 2015. remember every year we were taken out 3,000 of unrealized gain. Now we sold it to a third party. So remember, we had 5,000 of gains. Every year, we, we, kind of we, we did not count 3,000. We backed them out from the consolidated because they were, they were inter, intercompany gain. But once we sold it to a third party, three minus, three, 5 minus 3 equal to 2, we still have 2,000 of unrealized gain. Once we, sold, once we sell it to a third party, guess what? Now we can realize the gain. So we're going to debit credit gain and debit the beginning retained earning the company to realize the gain that we were that we were basically unrealized now we can realize it why can we realize it because we sold the asset to a third party we sold the asset to a third party now that gain is not legitimate it's 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 recognizable because it's not intercompany gain it's a gain it's an arm length gain it's a gain with a third party um, i hope this exercise helped you understand this topic which is not an easy topic to uh, um, to to tackle uh, obviously this is a cpa exam so i suggest if you need additional resources like exercises like this and lectures please visit my website for additional resources i have plenty of resources for advanced accounting cpa cpa4 just look look under categories i strongly suggest you subscribe it's an investment good luck study hard and see you on the other side of success